fast-paced, efficient, and growing. This is the image of many Asian societies today. But as demand and costs of energy rise, many wonder if economic growth in the region can be sustained, and if so, at what price for the environment. Sombun Sen Tongcheron owns a small business in Thailand, transporting oranges to the wholesale market just outside the capital, Bangkok. But with fuel prices rising, he's finding it increasingly difficult to run his business. I am worried because it seems like the prices are rising non-stop. I could handle it if the prices went up once a year or even twice a year. But they keep going up, so I'm getting really worried. Burdened by higher fuel costs and trapped by snarling traffic and emissions, his situation mirrors that of many countries. And with Asia-Pacific poised to become the world's largest consumer of energy in the next 20 years, energy security has become a topic of concern in the entire region. If we are to have energy security, then we need to move away from a, just a national perspective. Nolene Hazer leads the UN's Economic and Social Commission for Asia-Pacific, known as ESCAP. The commission has been focusing on how to bring governments and the private sector together, with the triple aim of making energy available, affordable and sustainable. Some skeptics wonder if a common approach can be reached. The Asia-Pacific region includes giants like China and India, but also many smaller countries and importers as well as exporters of energy. Most will agree that energy waste can and should be reduced, says South Korea's point man on climate change, Raekwon Chung. But so far, many governments and even the many private sector are obsessed over increasing the supply and not many uh, people are exploring the potential where we can economize and improve efficiency for the consumption of energy. Studies show that measures to improve energy use, like public transport, could bring efficiency gains of 20 to 30 percent to the region over the next two decades. And many believe that the key lies in attracting entrepreneurs to invest in energy efficient technology. I see very promising on this. We have an investment company called Green Fortune Investments. We invest in renewable energy and water businesses in China. But while the fast-growing economies of the region grab most of the headlines, Asia Pacific is also home to one billion people who have no access to electricity. There are also 1.5 billion people in the region who still use traditional biomass, like burning wood, for basic necessities like cooking and heating their homes. Developing sound policies for the future means making sure that they too have access to energy that won't ruin their environment. At the end of the day, it is about efficiency, it is about wastage, but it's also about new and clean technology. It is also about the need to develop a, a kind of distributive system that reaches some of the poorest areas in the best possible way so that we don't leave anyone out. It's a message that Mahatma Gandhi, honoured with this bust at the UN's offices in Bangkok, would approve. This report was prepared by Michele Zaccheo for United Nations Television.